Hello, how are you? Uh, it's another hope that today is another beautiful day for you. And today, without taking much time, I'd like to speak about the seven Gospels in the Bible. So we understand that in the Bible, we don't have only one uh, way that people are saved all through the Bible. We have things called dispensations, different dispensations from the time of Adam, Noah, we have Abraham, we have all the way in the law, Moses and all that. All through to the tribulation, people are saved in different ways. There are different keys that you're given so that you can be saved. You see, many people don't really believe this. Most of them, they say, no, we only saved one way. No, the, the Bible is uh, for us to learn something, but it's not to us every message. Like I have always said, in the Bible, we have an example. We have a guy called Noah. The Bible gives instructions to a person and he tells him, uh, go and build an ark. Is that message to us or is it for us to learn? You see, we cannot just speak the whole Bible and just make a cocktail and say, we're going to uh, be saved. I'll pick this and this and this and then I apply it to myself. No, we have to rightly divide the Bible very well. So the Second Timothy 2.15 tells us what we should do. 2 Timothy 2.15, it tells us, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Do you rightly divide the word of truth? Do you rightly divide the Bible? Because if you don't rightly divide the Bible, then you're going to be in trouble. You need to understand exactly what the Bible talks and for who and to who. And when you do that, you're rightly dividing the word of truth. So our gospel now, we are saved by the gospel of grace, which is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So our gospel, our gospel now is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I've always explained this one in most of my teachings. And this one is talks about how and how that Christ died for us exactly what jesus did this is about what what jesus did all right this is all about what jesus did for us what did jesus do for us he died at the cross he shed his blood for us all right so this is exactly what jesus did let me show you uh actually i should put this one here uh just a minute this is exactly what jesus did uh, should put it here. All right. So now what Jesus did is this. He shed his blood for us. And through this blood, we got redemption. Okay. We got forgiveness of sins. So let, let's just go there and be able to understand. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And be able to understand exactly what it says. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. So you have to hear the gospel preached. You have to uh, receive the gospel and you have to stand in the gospel. By which also you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. You have to keep in memory what is preached, what this gospel is. Uh, unless you're believing in vain, unless you're believing in yourself or believing in something else. All right. For I deliver unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So now we're being told this gospel is about how Jesus did, what Jesus did for us, how that he died, okay? So now once you understand this, it's all about the, uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins according to the scriptures. Once you believe that, that is the message of our gospel today, all right? So this is our gospel today. Now, having understood that, I want us to go straight ahead and be able to see. Are we saved in, by the same gospel? I, I, I mean, as all through the Bible, have we had the same gospel? No, we have had different gospels preached to different kinds of people. But now to our dispensation, to our time, like when you go to a mall, you go to Dubai Mall, it's really huge. And then uh, when you get somewhere, there is a map which is showing you, here is where I am. So right now, it's very important to see all through the Bible, where exactly are you? We are now in the church age. 
all right? Church age, towards the end of the church age. Actually, we are the apostate time where we see the great falling away. And that's why you see many people are teaching another gospel. They are teaching a different thing. And they don't really understand which is the right gospel. So, the first gospel that we are going to talk about is called the gospel of Abraham. All right? The gospel uh, of Abraham. Gospel of Abraham. Now, when I write and I say about the gospel of Abraham, many might wonder what exactly you're talking about. Let's see this gospel of Abraham. What did it entail? In Galatians 3.8, the Bible says, Galatians 3.8, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So this was good news, the gospel talking about how all nations will be blessed. It was talking about this, about nations being blessed by faith, by something that was promised to Abraham. So Abraham was this, given this good news. Actually, gospel is just a good news. It's the good news of something. So the good news here was that all nations will be blessed. So let's see what actually was Abraham told in the Old Testament, okay? Uh, in Genesis 12, 1 to 3, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So we're seeing something here. So this is a gospel of blessing. All right. So it was all about a certain blessing which was promised. Okay. Let's see verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So everyone who accepted this gospel of Abraham would be blessed. And it will be blessing through faith. So you'll be blessed by faith by, you know, accepting that. So this was the gospel back then. Let's see also. See what really happened as well. Genesis 13, 15 to 16 says, For all the land which thou seest, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then uh, sh shall thy seed also be numbered. And let's see also uh, Genesis 15, 5 through 6, it says, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and Tell the stars if you would be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and it, he counted it for him for righteousness. So this is a gospel of blessing. And it was received by faith. All right. It was received by faith. Abraham believed, and, and he was counted, his faith was counted to him for righteousness. All right. So... From this gospel of, uh, of Abraham, God wanted to foreshadow the gospel of the future. How by faith, by the same faith, this was just a foreshadowing of what will happen in the future. Of how by faith, people will be saved. Actually, Abraham proves this by the action of trying to sacrifice his only son. Being a foreshadow of Jesus being sacrificed in the future. So you understand all these things happen so that they can foreshadow something which would happen in the future. And you'll be able to see in all through these Gospels that I'll be showing, it is something which is implying what will happen in the future. So let's see. Is it really true that it was a foreshadow of what would happen in the future? Hebrews eleven seventeen to 19, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that... Uh, sorry, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Abraham, he was tried by God. He was told, go and do this. Go and sacrifice your only son. Yes, uh, he might have been wondering now. You told me this is the seed which is going to, you know, grow all that. And then it will be like the son of the seed. Then you're telling me, give the only son that I have. It was testing his faith. Foreshadowing something which would happen when 
the begotten son of God would be slain. Are, are you seeing the, the, the story? Verse 18 says, Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right. Verse 19, Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So you see, like Abraham thought, yes, God, you have given me Isaac, but now I don't really get it. How comes you want me to sacrifice, to kill my son? He thought maybe God is going to raise him up. Was that a foreshadow of what is going to happen? Are you seeing how the Bible uh, explains things even ahead? Let's see the other next gospel. It's called the Gospel of Moses, which happened in Kadesh Barnea. Gospel of Moses. Gospel of Moses. Uh, in a place called in Kadesh uh, Barnea. All right. So this one, the place called Kadesh Barnea, is when these guys were in the in the wilderness. Let let let's read it. In Hebrews three sixteen to nineteen, the Bible says, "For some, when they had heard, did provoke." How bait not all them that came out of Egypt by Moses? But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swore that uh, swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believeth not? So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. So we see something happened. Something happened. You remember the children of Israel making a lot of noise and telling Moses, you brought us here where there's no food, there's no water, there's no this. And also remember, uh, they had tried, uh, Moses had sent 12 spies, told them, go and check about this new land that we want to go and tell us how it is and how uh, the structures and the people are there. And 10 of them, <laughs> 10 of the guys who went to spy, they came back with very sad news. Hey, these guys are really huge. They have a very strong wall. We can't make it. And their unbelief made God angry. God got angry, angry because he said like, I've already promised you, I already promised your, your father, Abraham, this, this land. I already told him that you're going to get this land. But these people are unbelieving. It's only Joshua and Caleb who believe that and uh, having been complainers and doing this and they don't want to hear is like they are closing their their ears and their minds to what God has spoken then God was angry let's see Hebrews 4 2 for unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it so we see this one is explaining about exactly how these people were unbelievers. They, God wanted faith, but then they did not want faith. They, they kept on complaining one thing after another. Moses sent out some spies, I, I, like I told you before. And uh, we see all that one happening. Let, let me just read for you the story of exactly what happened in that time. In the Old Testament. Numbers, this story is found in Numbers 21. Numbers 21, 5 to 9. It says, and the people spake against Moses, Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathes this light bread. <laughs> they are complaining. This bread is, is not what we expected, like what we used to have in Egypt. Verse 6, And the Lord sent fiery serpents okay, among the people, and they beat the people and much more of Israel and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten when he looketh upon it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So now you understand something here. They were complainers. They were preached a certain gospel by Moses and told, you know, God wants this and this and this. But then... They did not want to hear. They were unbelieving people. 
They were unbelieving people. So they did not accept what they were being told. They were told, do this and this and this and this. You know, believe in God. Do what is right. But then they kept on complaining, having no faith. Having no faith. So what happened is this. God sent some serpents. So these serpents... They, 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 they gave some poison, you know, they poisoned people. So this poison from these serpents, it was a type of sin. It was a type of sin for their unbelief. So when someone set his eyes upon the serpent at the pole, he lived. So this was also a foreshadow of the cross of Jesus. So there was a serpent. So now, remember, there was a pole and then a serpent. There was a serpent on a pole. And when somebody looked at this serpent on a pole, what happened is that they were healed. Could this be foreshadowing looking at Jesus? Could this be foreshadowing the cross of Jesus Christ? And also the serpent is a, a, a type of the devil who introduced sin into the world. So these serpents, the serpents which came to uh, to to, to to, to, to bite people is a, is a type of Satan which was introducing sin into the world. So these people, because they were sinful and they never believed in God and they did what they, 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 they loved to do and did not listen to God. So Satan took advantage and beat them. And then now they had to look at the serpent at the pole to be saved or so that they can live. The other gospel it's called the gospel of Jesus. That is the birth of Jesus Christ. That is the good news of Jesus. Alright? This is the gospel of Jesus' birth. The gospel of Jesus' birth. Alright? Like we know, gospel is good news. So we have the good news of Jesus' birth. Let's see what really happened and who was it spoken to. Uh -huh. So we have in Luke, Luke 27 verse 33, the Bible talks about this. And we see the first place that we are hearing about this gospel, the good news of Jesus' birth, is when it was spoken uh, to both Joseph and Mary. Let's start with Mary. Luke 1, 27, 33. The Bible says, To a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying, and cast in her mind, What manner of salutation is this? Why, why are you greeting me like this? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So that, that is good news. Like there's a, someone who is coming to save the world, someone who is going to come, who will, be a, uh, uh, who will rule in the throne of his father David. That's really good news. These people had been waiting for this Messiah to come for long. So we see Jews were all through waiting for the Messiah. They have been waiting for, actually, for about 400 years. They have been waiting and waiting and waiting. And God was silent for almost for 400 years. And here comes the good news of the birth of the Messiah. Announced to Mary and then Joseph. Let's see, how was it announced to Joseph? In Matthew 1, 18 to 21, we see the news being announced to Joseph as well. Matthew 1, 18 to 21, it says, Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When, as his, ma uh, as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, uh, thou son of David, fear not to take thee... Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. 
or the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So this gospel is all about saving, all right? So there will be a savior. He will come and save. So this is really good news, okay? And this one was to fulfill a prophecy which was already spoken before by the prophets, which says, let, let's just see what prophecy was that. Just down there in Matthew 1, to 23, it says, Now all this was done that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So you see, this is really good news. This is really, really good news that a Messiah, a Savior is going to come. So we see this also another gospel, another form of gospel. All right. So now having seen that, let's see which is the fourth gospel. The fourth kind of gospel here. Let's see. This is the gospel of John. The gospel of John. Gospel of John. This is uh, Jesus, the Messiah. Mm, the Messiah. So John was saying, hey, the Messiah is about to be sh to show up. So this is a, he's speaking about the Messiah's arrival. So this is John. Let's see what John was talking about. John 1.19, it says, and this is the record of John. When Jesus sent priests and Levite from Jerusalem to ask him, uh, when the Jews, sorry, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? So they wanted to know, who exactly is this guy trying to tell people something here which you have not heard? Because like I told you, God had kept quiet for almost 400 years before Jesus showed up. So these people were just waiting and then they don't know what's happening. God has been silent for a long time. And now all of a sudden, some guy is preaching some message. So they ask him, hey, who are you? <laughs> Verse 20. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I'm, I'm, I'm not the Christ. Verse 21. And they ask him, what then? Are thou Elias or are you Elijah? Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then he said, uh, and uh, then said they unto him, Who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What says thou of thyself? Who do you say you are? So that we can know what to tell the other people. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And it's, as says the prophet Isaiah. And and they which were sent of the Pharisees, and they which were sent of the Pharisees, verse 25, and they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizes thou then, if uh, thou be not that Christ, not Elias, neither that prophet? Why are you baptizing then, if you are not all these people? Then John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom you, knew, you know not. He is he, it is he it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I'm not worth it to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Let's see verse 29. It speaks about this, about this Messiah who, who jo, uh, John is speaking about. Now, the next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. So already John is saying now, this is the Lamb of God. This is the Lamb of God. This is the guy I was talking about yesterday. You remember I was telling you about this? Now, here is him. Verse 30. This is he whom I said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me. For he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest unto Israel, therefore I come baptizing with water. You see, <laughs> there are so many people, there, there is a time that I've argued so much with people about baptism and why John had to baptize with water. You see, many people don't rightly divide the word of truth. They don't want to go to exactly their dispensation. Many of the Pentecostal churches, they are exactly there at the day of Pentecost. 
My friend, we are ready from the day of Pentecost. We are ready from baptism in water. Now you are baptized by the Holy Spirit. That's why he's saying, actually the main thing that I'm baptizing Jesus is to make him manifest. And also, we know very well that John was baptizing so that, uh, John was baptizing in water so that he can be able to, uh, for the forgiveness of sins. Right now, are we baptized for forgiveness of sins? No. What's the essence of baptism? To receive the Holy Spirit. Right now, According to Ephesians 1.13, when you get, when you believe the gospel, you are immediately sealed. You, you are saved and you're sealed. So that's, that's a topic for another thing, for another day. But you see also here, the reason why John was baptizing Jesus was to make him manifest, to be known. So there was a reason for that. And also to show this is the Lamb of God. So all that was good news to show your Messiah, the person that you've always uh, thought about the person who you were prophesied by the prophets will come is here now is here now and uh, is the one that I'm giving you the good news about so John confirms and confesses that Jesus is God so he confirmed exactly and said Jesus is God you know let's let's see verse 34 he says and I saw and bear record that this is the son of God so John confirms this is the son of God Verse 36, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, behold the Lamb of God. So John is confirming this good news. The Son of God is here. The Lamb of God. So he was confirming two things. The Son of God and the Lamb of God. You see, when we see Jesus as the Lamb of God, we are seeing what? The Savior of the whole world. And also Jesus the Messiah is the, 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 the promised King. To Israel. So he's, he's talking about what will happen. Jesus is going to die, become the lamb, and also he's the Messiah, the promised seed. So you see, that was good news. That was really, really good news. The other good news that we're seeing is the gospel of the kingdom. This was preached by Jesus to the Jews. This one will get so many people uh, off, off guard. Mm, let me show you the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. So this one was preached by Jesus. By Jesus and uh, early apostles. There's a reason why I've added early apostles there. Let me let me show you. So now many people don't understand that you, you know, you say we follow Jesus, but how do you follow Jesus? Do you follow him rightly, dividing the word? Or do you just follow blindly and say, you know, I just go there and uh, as long as I believe Jesus. If you believe today Jesus is the Messiah, then the Messiah, this word is actually, it was for the Jews. It's a promised seed to the Jews. So you believe Jesus, who he is, then I think that one cannot save you. It's not enough to save you. You believe what Jesus did for you, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that you need to believe. But you see, many people try to change this message and say, no, we cannot believe what Jesus did for us. We have to believe Jesus is the Messiah. So how are you going to be saved by another gospel, which is not of your dispensation? How are you going to be saved by... And uh, most people, other people, they are lost in this gospel of the kingdom. Don't you know that Jesus was actually not even preaching anything about the death, burial, and resurrection? How could Jesus say, hey guys, believe in me, I died for you. You died for us and you're here. Like, how does it happen? You died for us and you're here with us. You see, it had to be somebody else had to preach. And that's why we see another gospel coming in later on, which I'll tell you. And of course, you know which one I'll speak about, the gospel of Paul. But now let's first focus on the gospel of the kingdom. Let's see, this gospel of the kingdom, what does it entail? What was Jesus talking about? So now, having seen that, we see Jesus was preaching a very different gospel from the gospel of today. Let's see, Matthew 4.23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease among people. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Let's see again, Matthew 9.35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching 
in all their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Again, we see that word. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Let's keep on checking. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Let's see also one more. Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lordship of the house of Israel. Now we understand the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus is preaching is to the Jews. This gospel is to the Jews. He's telling them, Jews, hey, there is a certain message, there is a certain kingdom that I want to establish. So which kingdom is that that Jesus was talking about? We need to understand which kingdom is this. Because if this is the message of the kingdom, are we saved by the gospel of the kingdom or another different gospel? This is the millennial kingdom that was promised to Israel, whereby they were told a Messiah will come to rule them in a literal kingdom, not, not, not the kingdom of, uh, you know, there's a kingdom of God and there's a kingdom of heaven. The, the Bible tells us the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. It's a spiritual kingdom. But now we are talking about the literal kingdom where Jesus will be here ruling. So they knew that Jesus, the Messiah, would come and rule exactly at that time. But then they didn't know that something else would happen first. Jesus had to come for the cross first and later for the crown. And even uh, if, they, if actually they had listened to, 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 to John, they could have understood. When John was saying, behold the Lamb of God. Is a lamb coming to wear a crown? No. The lamb was coming to be sacrificed for the sin of the world. Who taketh away the sin of the world? So if they had understood that word, they could have known, right now it's not coming for this. It's coming to be sacrificed as a lamb, to be slain, so that the sin of the world can be taken out. And then now later on, we can, ha we can have the kingdom set up. So Jesus was coming to bring a literal kingdom. And that's why his message, the whole of the message of Jesus Christ was all about the kingdom. The kingdom, the, ki the literal kingdom that he will be ruling at the throne of his father David. Alright? So let's, let's see. What exactly was Jesus preaching? We have seen it's all about the kingdom. But let's see just an example of one or two. You see, most people go to the... Let me give you a good example. Many people go to the Beatitudes. Like in uh, Matthew 5, 3 to 5. Let, let's just read about 2 or 3. Matthew 5, 3 to 5, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's a future time. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. When will you inherit the earth? Now? Or oh, in heaven? No. We are told that the kingdom of heaven... It's later on. It's later on. It's going to happen. So we see all these kind of things that Jesus was teaching. He was talking about the future kingdom. When he was not talking about the kingdom of God, which is we are right now. When you're saved, you get into the kingdom, become a member of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is spiritual. He was talking about a literal kingdom. So his message, and that's why Jesus was always like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to deal with the Jews, uh, to, with the Gentiles. He told that woman, no, 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 I was sent, but only to the lost sheep of Israel. I, I'm not, no, I'm not after you. But then the woman insisted, and then she was told, your faith has healed you. You remember that woman saying, even, even dogs eat what has fallen down. So he was, she was trying to express and say, please, even if you're talking about the other kingdom, even if you're coming for the Jews, I'm a Gentile, just help me. Even if it's just the way a dog can take some bones which have fallen from the table. Are you seeing a difference? And most people tend to think, ah, this is, the, this is a gospel which, which we are supposed to be saved now. No, that's not the gospel that you're saved now. In the in their thousand-year kingdom, when someone sins, he is sent straight to hell. There and then. Not like now when you repent or even wait until you die to be punished. Right now when you sin, what happens? God is patient. He has a lot of grace. But when the rapture happens and there is no grace, and now we are in the literal kingdom, the rapture happens, we have the tribulation, and then the tribulation is over, and then we get into the 
kingdom. Jesus even explains in that time the uh, yes, Jesus will be there, but when you sin in the in the, in that kingdom, it will be better for you because you'll be sent down, you'll be you'll be sent to hell right there and then. Even Jesus explains Matthew 5:30 he says, "And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell." Why is he talking like this? Does it happen today that when you sin or maybe you you've looked at a beautiful woman and you're like, "Eh, you remember God has said whoever looks at a woman lustfully has already sinned with her and then you pluck out your eyes. Should you do that today? No. Because right now is a very different dispensation. But it will happen in a future time, a future period. So this is what Jesus was preaching and also it's the same same message which the early apostles and Peter also preached. They they preached in the first early early times. That is the Acts 1 2 3 up until when uh, Paul shows up Paul got saved around Acts 9 before that the message was repent and be baptized do this there, there was a lot of works and people were, were more so preaching Jesus who he is not what Jesus has had done even we also see a uh, Philip when he was preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip preached him Jesus why is he preaching him Jesus instead of preaching him what Jesus did so he was literally preaching who Jesus is not what Jesus did so you see the transition and then as the days went by they started understanding no now is no longer about who Jesus is but what Jesus did for us so now the message changes from a uh, faith plus works to now faith only so the book of acts is a transition book i know many people uh especially in the pentecostal churches don't really uh, agree with this and also several different uh, people who maybe have gotten the whole doctrine wrong they may not agree with this but the book of acts is transition and i can tell you vividly 100% it's a transition book it is transitioning from faith plus works to faith alone now it's all about what jesus did for us you believe in the finished work of christ at the cross instead of believing in what, who Jesus is as a messiah i hope you're getting the difference number 6 we have the gospel of paul we have the gospel of paul the gospel of paul also called the gospel of grace also called the gospel of god so there are three kinds of uh, definition gospel of paul gospel of grace or gospel of god so now this gospel you have already understood it here it is in found in 1 corinthians 15:1 through 4 i've already explained that so it's all about christ being crucified for our sins so paul's gospel is for the jews and gentiles but the other earlier gospels are for the jews only all these other gospels as are specifically to the Jews and of course the others are just foreshadowing what will happen in the future but this is not how we are saved today we are saved by the gospel of grace the gospel of Paul this is the gospel which was given to us so that we can be saved the bible tells us exactly who Paul is and actually why is in the bible In Romans 11:13 the Bible says for I speak unto you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles I magnify my office. So Paul is saying I am the apostle of the Gentiles. The apostle. Not I am an apostle to the Gentiles. No, the apostle literally means I am the one, the person who is giving you the gospel, the Gentiles. And of course you see the Bible now saying that in this time of Paul there is no gentile or jew so it any gentile any jew whoever believes you can be saved at that time but later on we will see the things will change <laughs> and uh, even before it was all jews 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 and maybe just foreshadowing of what will happen in the future but that's not what was saving us now we are saved by this the gospel all right so now let's see something here If you're a gentile you can only be saved through Paul's gospel. There's no other way you can be saved. Yes, if you're also a Jew you can be saved also with the gospel of Paul. Let's see Romans 2:16. It 
It says, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So one day God is going to judge the whole earth according to the gospel of Paul. 2 Timothy 2.8, it says, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So, this is the gospel. This is death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the whole event which gives us salvation today. There was a secret as well which was kept hidden since the world began, but was revealed to Paul. Do you know that secret? The secret was the gospel, this gospel. All right. It was a gospel of grace. And it explained that finally Jesus will take away the sin of the world. So this is something which was hidden. People always went and they did uh, sacrifice animals and did that. It was all remission of sins. I explained before what is remission. Remission is sins go and then they will come back again. Sins go, they will come back, back again. But now we understand something. When Jesus came and he became the lamb, now we don't have remission. We have a redemption. We were redeemed of our sins, our past, present, and future sins. So now Jesus gave us redemption. He died for us once. So this is a secret which was hidden. It was not known to people that one day we'll be sinless. It was not known. Let's see. Romans 16, 25. It says, Now to him that is of power to, slap, to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. There was a mystery kept hidden. But now, after being hidden all that time, Jesus came and he revealed that to Paul. Even when Jesus was here, people were still not understanding. Why is Jesus talking this? Why is he saying this? What's... Some things he could say, I am the bread of life. I'm the resurrection. I am this. But then people are not really understanding. What is this guy talking about? I'm the resurrection. I'm the life. Whoever eats me. Whoever... All those kind of things. No, nobody really understood. But later when Jesus died and rose again, later he revealed the same to Paul. And now we have the gospel of our dispensation. So God revealed this to Paul. And we can see this in Galatians 1.8. Galatians 1.8, it says, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, watch that. Just before I go to the next verse, which is explaining uh, the revelation of this gospel. See that word there. Though we, or an angel from heaven, mark that word, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel, and to you, than which we have, we have preached, let him be a cast. So Paul is saying, don't listen to us or even an angel from heaven or anyone who comes with another gospel except this gospel. If you're living in the time of the church age, is that what's going to happen in the future? Are we going to see someone else coming up with another gospel? Because already we have this. Keep, keep it locked there. Galatians 1, 11 to 12, it says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul is saying, this gospel that I'm giving you here, that I'm telling you to follow, follow, follow this gospel, is not after man. It is a gospel which is a revelation from Jesus Christ. So if it's a revelation from Jesus Christ, then don't worry, believe this, because if you follow me, you're following Christ. If you follow Paul, you're following Christ, okay? Paul confirms that he also went back to the apostles and told them about the same, the same gospel. So now they also transition to it. You see, there are many people who say, uh, okay, if then Paul was given this gospel, what about the other apostles? What are they preaching? Yes, they were preaching who Jesus was. But later on, when Paul was revealed this gospel, what happened? He went back and told the apostles, Hey guys, <laughs> Jesus revealed to me something. And uh, I need you to understand what he revealed so that also you can start preaching that. And of course, not, not, not always easy. You know, when you're trying to tell people new things, you tell them, hey, this is what has happened. This is, this is the true word of God. And maybe people are used to some tradition. They're used to some way of doing things. It's like... I've always argued so much with, with different people. 
Even in the church, we argue about this. No, 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 you see, there, there are no other gospel. We only have one gospel. Because they are used and they just know this is how we have been seeing things happening. This is how things have always happened. But you tell people, no, there are a number of gospels in the Bible. So this is this. And this. Many people don't want to change. They, they don't want to understand the truth. Why do we have so many denominations? We have 4,000 different denominations in the church today. It's because all people don't agree. This one has this, this one has this. If we all follow the Bible, then I think we could agree. All right? This is the same thing. Listen to what happened. In uh, Galatians 2, 1 to 2, Paul says, eh, Then, 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem. So, Paul is coming back to Jerusalem after 14 years with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Verse 2, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of the reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So he's saying, I went to Jerusalem and I talked to people at least who are of reputation because the others will, no, 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 Paul, this one, we are used to this. So that if when I run to tell these people, I don't run in vain. So that when I say, it won't, you know, you have to tell some people who are of reputation. Because the Bible explains to us very well, people are so hard-hearted, they, they don't want to change. They are just, they, we are stuck with this and we are stuck with this. No, <laughs> but Paul was revealed on the gospel of our dispensation. But people are still stuck to this old gospel, which is the gospel of the kingdom, thinking that this was going to take them to heaven. No. We have the gospel of Paul, which is called the gospel of grace. So apostles first were preaching what Jesus did to Jews. Later on, after getting to hear what Paul got from Jesus, about what Jesus did for our sins, that is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, they started preaching that gospel of God, or the gospel of grace, or which is also called the gospel of Paul. All the three mean the same. Gospel of grace, gospel of Paul, gospel of God. They all mean the same, and I can confirm this one to you. In Romans 1.1, 1, 1. Romans 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. You see? Gospel of God. Acts 20.24, 20, it says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with the joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So it's also called the, the gospel of grace. All right? 1 Timothy 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, 1 Timothy 1.11, sorry. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed unto my trust. All right? So he's saying this gospel was committed unto the trust of Paul. So this is what he has to make sure that people understand. And of course, we see so many places, like I read to you, uh, uh, Romans 2.16. It says, the whole world be, will be judged according to my gospel. That is Paul. So it's called the gospel of Paul, the gospel of grace or gospel of God. So do you understand that? Now, let's go to the last gospel, which is called the everlasting gospel. Everlasting, everlasting gospel. Now, this everlasting gospel, <laughs> all right, this gospel will, will be preached after the rapture happens. Immediately the rapture happens, things change. So if you miss the rapture, then this is the gospel which is going to save you. So after the rapture happens, there'll be another gospel preached by an angel. Do you remember I told you in Galatians 1.8 what he says, Though an angel from heaven preach another gospel, let him be accursed. This gospel will be preached by an angel. This gospel will be preached by an angel. Alright? Let's see. This one proves that in the Bible there are dispensations. There are different dispensations and you only need to study so that you can be rightly approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2, 15. All right? So let's see. Let's see about this gospel, which is preached by an angel. Revelation 14, 6 to 7. We see this gospel. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, 
to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and every kindred, and tongue, and people. So an angel fly in the midst of heaven, and Paul has already told us, if an angel from heaven, or someone else, or even us, come back again and preach another gospel, let them be accursed. So now we have an angel from heaven. That already tells you that the Bible has dispensations. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, this is the message that the angel will be speaking about. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worshiping that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So the message is about worship, uh, uh, fear God, give him glory, and worship him that made heaven, earth, and the sea and the fountains of water. Is that how we are saved today? No. No. Today we are told to believe the gospel, the gospel of death, burial, and resurrection. This is not what, this is not how we are saved today. Actually, this gospel includes works, works and faith. So there is an aspect of works and faith. You remember in the, in the, in the, in the tribulation, we are told that there will be a mark of the beasts. And the only way, even if you say, oh Lord, I love you, but then you take the mark of the beasts. Uh, no, even if you say, oh Jesus, I believe that you died for me and you take the mark, you're going to hell. There will be an aspect of works. You will have to believe, yes, faith in Jesus, but then you have to do some work. You have to make sure that you don't take the mark of the beast. You see, those are two different things. Right now we are not saved by doing anything. We are only saved by believing what Jesus did for us. We, we can also confirm this faith plus works. In um, Revelation 14, 12, it explains to us about this. It tells us that here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and faith of Jesus. So they are keeping commandments of God and faith, faith of Jesus. Is it faith of Jesus or faith in Jesus? Yes, faith of Jesus. So you have to keep commandments of God and faith. So... Are we saved this way today? This seems to be faith plus works. Here is faith only. All right. So are you seeing the difference? There's a different dispensation here. We we can be able to understand that. There is a different way. There's a different uh, gospel here. All right. So we are to obey the gospel of God. If... uh, If you live in the church age, you just obey the gospel of God, this gospel of grace. But here we see we have to obey faith plus works. Sometimes I forget writing here of works, spellings. All right. Faith plus works. So you can see there will be another different gospel. So now, having understood that, let me wind up by telling you something. In 1 Peter 4.17, it says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Judgment will begin at the house of God. And if it is first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? If judgment is starting in the church, what will be for them, those who do not obey the gospel of God, this gospel of Paul or gospel of grace, how will it be for them? Those people who say, no, I don't want to obey this gospel. I want to obey this. 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 I want to obey all the other gospels, but the gospel of Paul or the gospel of grace or the gospel of God. So it will be so difficult for you. You'll be judged even more because the Bible tells us that we have two kinds of judgments. We have the judgment seat of Christ for all saved people. Saved people will not be judged with the other people. We, judgment will start in the church. We'll be judged first. We'll be judged our, uh, on our works. But we'll not lose our salvation. We'll only be judged and, you know, you did this and this and this and this. When After you got saved, was it right or wrong? It will pass through fire and all that. But then people who are not saved, they love another different judgment, which is the great white throne judgment after their thousand year millennium. And theirs will just be to be shown this what you did. This is why we are sending you to hell, back to hell. You see? So now, if we have two judgments, then it shows that the Christians are already, you have already received an out-of-court judgment through Jesus Christ. 
And that's why it's very important to believe this gospel. Because if you don't believe the gospel, it's going to be really tough for you. And we see many people have really gone against people who preach this gospel of God. Many people, like we see back in the days when the Catholics were persecuting the, the true Christians, they were persecuting these guys and they were saying, actually they used to call them Paulicians. They used to call them Paulicians. They used to call them, the Paulicians were persecuted back in the days. Why were they called Paulicians? Because they dogmatically follow the teachings of Paul, which was faith only, faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, faith in what Jesus did. But then the Catholics wanted, no, it has to be faith plus some works. We have to, you know, there have to be something else extra. We, you, you, you have to maybe take some sacraments, baptism and this and this. But now these guys, <laughs> they were full into the teachings of Paul and they were persecuted by the Catholics. That shows you that Paul was really important in the Bible. And uh, if you really want to get saved, forget about all these other Gospels. These are for us to learn. They are for us to learn something. But it's not what saves us today. You have to believe in the right Gospel, which is the Gospel of Paul, the Gospel of Grace, Gospel of God, which is all about what Jesus did for us, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins. When you believe this, the Bible tells us that Everyone will be judged according to the gospel of Paul, Romans 2.16. So you have to make sure you understand that. I believe it was a good, wonderful teaching. I hope you have been able to understand something. Kindly, please, you can share to other people so that they can be able to learn as well. And we can edify one another. God bless you and have a great time. See you in the next one.